is really making a difference in New York. How so? She's organizing suffrage meetings all over the city. I don't really understand why women need to vote. Women of my generation found plenty of ways to influence the course of events without having to stand on a soapbox. Women are expected to obey the laws our leaders make. Shouldn't we have a say in selecting those leaders? Hi, thanks for joining us as we do some exciting research for a book report for Samantha. We're here with my fabulous aunt, Colleen Jenkins, who is the great, great granddaughter of one of the real American suffragists. You know, one of the women who worked hard for us to get the right to vote. Can you share some stories about your amazing family and what they did to give women the same basic rights as men? My name's Colleen Jenkins, as you know, and I'm Carly's aunt, and I'm thrilled to be able to talk to you about women's rights. I know a lot about it because my family for six generations has been pushing women's rights. My great-great-grandmother was Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and she helped organize the movement that got women the right to vote. And I'm really proud to have my daughter, Elizabeth, here with us today, and she's going to help us tell the stories. Hi, girls. Hi. Elizabeth Cady Stanton felt it was really important to vote, but women couldn't do it at that time. And so she became a suffragist. That means somebody who believes in voting. And she believed women should vote just like men should vote. My great-grandmother, Harriet Stanton Blatch, lived at the same time as Aunt Cornelia and Samantha. Do you remember Aunt Cornelia was very active in the suffrage movement? Well, my great-grandmother, Harriet Stanton Blatch, she helped organize the suffrage movement in New York City. When did your great-great-grandma first get interested in getting women equal rights? I have a good story about Elizabeth Cady Stanton when she was a child about your age. She lived in a house, and right next to the house was her father's law office. He was a lawyer and a judge. And women would knock on their home door and say, Judge Cady, please help us. And there was one woman who said, my husband's so selfish. He's not giving money to me so I can help feed our children. Please help us. And Judge Cady would open the law book and he would say, the law is so that your husband controls the money. So Elizabeth was really upset and she made a plan. She would go back into his law office and open the law book and cut out the paragraphs that she didn't like. And her father found out about it and he said, nope, even if you cut up my books, that won't work. You have to go to the capital of the state and talk to the lawmakers and tell them that they have to make the laws more fair for women. And that's exactly what she did. When Elizabeth grew up, she went to the New York State Legislature and she said, change the laws, make them more fair for women. Do you remember Samantha had a little locket and it had her mother and father in the locket? Well, that was very important to her. And Elizabeth, Elizabeth Cady, when she was a young girl, she got this coral necklace as a Christmas present. But do you know what the law said? That when Elizabeth Cady Stanton got married, her property was her husband's. What? That's kind of like saying that beautiful set of earrings that you have right now that are you think they're yours, right? Well, if you got married, your husband would have owned those earrings. So he could have given those away. He could have sold them, locked them up. Crazy. <laughs> the law controlled ownership. And once a woman was married, they had no legal right to own property. And you know what's sad? They couldn't even own their own children. Wow. Basically, the goal was to change it so that 
women and children weren't property, like my mom said, but they were citizens with rights and with the right that was most important, which is the right to vote. Was life that different for a girl during Samantha's time compared to today? Samantha's time was very different than your lives today. You have so many choices. You can become a doctor, a lawyer, you can go to college, you can own property. It's Samantha had two role models. Grand Mary, who was essentially at home sewing and visiting with friends, whereas Aunt Cornelia started going out into the other world and exploring women's suffrage, speaking in public, getting a college education. So Samantha's choices were very different than your choices today. You have many more choices. What do you think Aunt Cornelia would have done to help the cause? There are many things that Aunt Cornelia could have done to help the cause. In New York City, women were organizing and they were marching up Fifth Avenue and all different types of women were in the parades. And each one marched in these groups and they had a common cause and that was to change the U.S. Constitution to allow women to vote. Another thing Aunt Cornelia could have done was picketing in front of the White House. Picketing is basically when you bring large signs, posters like the ones you see behind you, or maybe the umbrella over there with messages on it, and they stood right in front of the White House, in front of that front gate, so that the president and everyone who came to see the president would see how much they cared about the cause. If women had no rights, how did they spread the word to get more people involved? There are many ways they spread the word. For instance, my grandmother did horseback crusades. She sat on a horse and she put this banner on her and she rode around Upper New York State. There are other ways the women got the message out. If you think, remember they wanted everybody included in the movement? Well, how about a scrub brush? All the women would be scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing and very faint here, it says, Votes for Women's Suffrage, 1915. Then there's another really fun thing. Look, a fly swatter. Look what it says, swat the fly, give women the vote, and be happy. Another way of getting the message out is don't forget one half the human race votes for women. So they wanted to make sure half the people weren't left out of the democracy. That's not fair, is it? That would be like me asking you all a question, but only listening to half of you. And I believe Samantha should have as much say in her government as that little boy next door. Is your great-great-great-grandmother the most famous person in American history? Well, I wouldn't say she's the most famous person, really. Who is the most famous person in American history? I'm not sure I could tell you, but she certainly did make very important contributions to the history of the United States. So there are many men and women who have contributed to American history, as you asked, and several of them are actually represented in the U.S. Capitol building. There was actually a beautiful statue created of several women who were involved in the suffragist movement, but that statue was put in the basement of the U.S. Capitol. So a lot of individuals got together and raised funds in order to move this heavy, heavy statue of three very important women, including my great, great, great grandmother, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, so that everyone could see it when they come on tours to the U.S. Capitol in the beautiful room alongside the forefathers. Do you think there could ever be a woman president? I will vote for the best person to be president, and I hope that I will be able to vote for a woman as the best person for president. Today, we've been talking a lot about voting, so let's have some fun. Let's vote. Should America have a female president? All those in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. Aye. And I hope that one of you becomes president of the United States of America.